Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Leela. I go by Natural Leela here on YouTube and we do faith-based content. I'll throw a little lifestyle in there and femininity. But if you guys are interested in content like that, definitely hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you. But today we are going to be talking about confidence in God. If you have an area in your life where you are struggling to trust God, I encourage you to have confidence in the Lord. And the Lord really encouraged me with this this week. So I want to tell y'all a little bit about what he's been teaching me. He's been talking to me a lot about faith. And this is just another area that he's really been hammering down on me to have faith. So the other day I was in prayer and typically at the end of my prayer, I will ask God if there's anything that he has for me today, I'll ask the Holy Spirit to reveal anything that I need to lean into anything that um, he wants me to know anything I'm missing and I'll just listen and so the other day I heard confidence and I'm like okay so I need to lean into confidence confidence in what like confidence to do my YouTube videos like I just didn't necessarily understand so I, I asked I'm like confidence in, confidence in what confidence for what and I heard confidence in what I will do, confidence in who I am, confidence that what I've said will come to pass. And I'm like, okay, this is more about faith again. All right, all right. So later that day, I was in Hebrews 10. Randomly, I just got led there because of something else. And finally, the Lord made the connection for me. There's two particular places in Hebrews chapter 10, where the word confidence is used. And so it really painted the picture of what the Lord was trying to get me to understand that morning. We have to be completely convinced and confident that we have been redeemed in Christ by the blood of Jesus. You know, like we have to truly fully submit to that truth. And I think that is an area that I wasn't really picking up on. The gospel, the whole good news of Christianity is that we were sinners separated from God. Jesus came. He lived a sinless life. He lived the life we couldn't live. He died the death we should have died on the cross. And he rose again three days later. His blood atoned for our sin. His death atoned for our sin. And so now we can be reunited with God the Father in eternity. And that's the beauty of Christianity. That is what we believe wholeheartedly. And so that confidence in the blood of Christ and the finished work of the cross is literally what Christianity is based off of. And so when I was reading Hebrews 10, which I'll read it for you right here, essentially this is what Hebrews um, 10, 19 through 23 is saying. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful so when i read this it dawned on me like first and foremost we have confidence to go before god right and we can go to god with this full assurance that he hears us that he loves us that he has redeemed us and it says here even that our hearts are sprinkled clean knowing that we are cleansed of our sin and Paul here, or who, the writer of Hebrews, is saying, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. So this unwavering faith, this is literally what the Christian life is about. It's our confession of Jesus Christ, our hope in him, our hope in his blood, 
our hope in his sacrifice that it will redeem us and, and grant us salvation in eternity and we'll be reunited in heaven with God. And we have this unwavering faith in something we didn't see. We don't, we didn't see, we can't see. We just have a confidence that what was done on the cross, it's finished. That hope is not just based on the fact that, oh, we want to believe. It's because the one who promised is faithful. That's what it says in Hebrews here. We hold fast to our confession of faith without wavering for he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. We can be confident. We can be confident in our salvation because God is faithful. We can be confident in the words of God because God is faithful in the promises of God because his character, God is faithful. So he was telling me, have confidence in my character that I am faithful that I am able to save and redeem and have confidence in what I said I will do. So that is just the foundation of our confidence. It's confidence in God, confidence in the finished work of Christ. And I'll also add this, faith and confidence go hand in hand. If you have lost confidence in God, you've lost faith. You've lost faith. If it's like, oh, he might, he may, he may, he may not. You have lost faith. (laughs) Your confidence is the evidence of your faith at the end of the day. So the two go hand in hand. And I'll reference Hebrews 11 and 1 here, where it says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for, assurance about what we do not see. So faith is confidence in what we hope for. And the assurance, even though we don't see it. So if you don't have confidence, you actually don't have faith. And that's where the Lord was trying to get me to understand. I need you to have confidence. You want to know what it looks like to have faith? What is the evidence of your faith? It's your confidence. Despite the circumstance, the circumstance can say one thing, but your confidence is in the thing you can't see yet. That is faith at work. The circumstances could be telling you one thing, but what did God tell you? And are you still standing on it? Are you still believing him with full assurance that it will be done? If you're double-minded about it, you've lost faith. You've moved into doubt. Your confidence should be in the faithfulness of God, that he will do what he says, that the thing that you have hoped on will be fulfilled by him and that it will be good and you can have full assurance now, even though you don't see it. So it sounds crazy to people. It's like, why are you so sure? Why are you so confident that that's what's gonna happen? Because the God I serve is faithful. He's faithful and my faith is in him. So I can have this confidence in him, even when I don't see it, even when it doesn't make sense to anyone else. So we have to grab hold of our confidence in God as the evidence of our faith. And then the second verse in this chapter that talks about confidence is Hebrews 10, 35 through 36. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. We need confidence in God to endure till the end of this walk with Christ and receive the promise and the reward of eternal life with him. And we'd have to do the same thing with the things that we're hoping on God for in this life. Our faith should be unwavering. Our confidence should be unwavering because God is faithful. God is faithful. And he's faithful to his promises. If we can believe him for confidence, with confidence for salvation, how much more can we believe him to live up to his promises and what he has said he will do in our lives? How much more can we have confidence that he will be faithful in our health, in our families, in our finances, in our relationships? 
we should have confidence in the God that we love and the God that we serve. We should have confidence in him. And I know it's not easy. It is not easy to keep faith, to be confident in the things that God has said when you don't see it, when it's been taking a while, when things are looking the total opposite. But let me show you why this is important, why you have to double down, why I'm doubling down on this point about confidence, about faith. Because without it, you literally shot yourself in the foot. You have to fight to get that confidence and that faith back in God. Here in James 1 verse 6, it says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. As I was saying, if you're double-minded, that thing you're actually hoping for, it says it right here in James 1, don't expect to receive anything. If you are not confident that the God that you ask for it is faithful to deliver it, you've sabotaged your own request. You've sabotaged your own promise. You've sabotaged your own inheritance. God has planned to give you this thing, but you have lacked faith. You should expect to receive nothing. Your faith is critical. <laughs> I literally like ow. Your faith is critical. Your confidence in God, in his promises, that he will bring them to pass is critical. Even when Jesus went to his hometown, the people doubted him. He performed very few miracles there because the people did not have faith. Faith is a requirement to receive the promises, to receive the inheritance that God has for us. Faith is a requirement. If you don't believe in the crucifixion, if you don't believe in the Lamb of God, why would you expect to receive the reward and the promise of salvation if you have not believed and endured in that belief until the end? So it's the same thing with anything we're hoping for from God in this life and anything that he has ordained to give us. We have to have full assurance. And the crazy thing is, as I'm sitting here preaching to y'all, I'm preaching to myself because I was not believing God. In a particular area of my life, I had lost confidence that his hand would move, basically, that he could actually work a situation out for good. I knew he could, but I didn't know that he would. I lost confidence that he would do it. I'm like, well, you haven't done it all this time, so I don't know if you're actually going to do it at this point. And the thing is, why God took me through this whole journey through Hebrews is to show me how to get my confidence back. And it's by looking at the cross. If you are a Christian and you have lost confidence in God, remember the blood that was shed so that you could have salvation. Remember your confidence in Christ. What is all of your faith even based off of? It's based off the finished work of the cross, the promise of God to redeem his people and the fulfillment of that promise. And then... Once you've remembered that, remember all the promises that God has made good on. Remember the times that he has come through for you in, at the last second in the clutch. Remember the things that he blessed you with that you were not deserving of. Remember the, all the times that he has been faithful. You didn't see it then, but you're living in it now. And it'll be the same thing with whatever you're struggling to trust God with. You don't see it now, but you'll be living in it if you have confidence that he will do it. It'll be a testimony. Remember your testimony. Remember what God has done in your life. Go to that altar of remembrance. Remind yourself the goodness of God. Remind yourself how faithful he has been to you. Remind yourself the times he saved you. 
the time he redeemed you, the thing he's delivered you from. The situation that looked hopeless, but somehow he made a way. So encourage yourself by remembering those things and then apply that confidence to the thing that you're still hoping for. And then get into the word. Read the promises of God. Read stories where God's character is highlighted for whatever you're trusting him for. It's so critical that we renew our mind with the Bible and that we use it to learn and to understand our God. Remember his promises and believe that they are for you. Not just in the next life, but in this one. And then lastly, pray. If you are struggling with faith, pray to the Lord. Ask for the grace to believe. Ask him to help your unbelief. Ask him for confidence in him. You can ask him for a sign. You can ask him, Lord, show me that you were still with me. Show me that you're still working in this situation. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. That's what the man did when Jesus was trying to heal his son. And Jesus was able to heal him. And also ask others to pray for you and to encourage you. Listen to other people's testimonies that have been in that similar situation that you're in, that you're trusting God in, and how God has moved. If he can do it for them, he can do it for you. So yeah, those are my tips. And yeah, that's just what I learned from the Lord about confidence and about faith. And I think I'm going to keep going in this faith series as long as the Lord is leading me in this area because it's just so important. It's so important and it really will transform your walk with the Lord um, to walk in confidence and full assurance and faith. We have to have it. It's the foundation. It's the foundation of our relationship with him. So yeah, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was encouraging. I hope you're able to reflect on areas in your life where you are not trusting God. You're not operating out of faith. And you've lost confidence in God and who he is in what he said and in what he can do. Be confident in God. Hold on to that full assurance. Hold on to the hope and endure in times of trial so that you will receive the reward. Salvation, first and foremost, being the reward. Connection with God, first and foremost, being the reward. But also all of the benefits that he's promised us in his word. Thank y'all for watching. Be blessed. I love you. God loves you. Stay encouraged. See you next time. Bye.